Hello everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we talked about different environments in robotic frameworks where we just saw how to set the setting section, the variable sections, as well as the test cases and the keywords. Now in this video, we are going to pick the same example and here we'll see what are the locators in robotic frameworks. And here I've divided the complete video in two sections. So one is robot locators in robot frameworks. And the second one is how to create a resource file and how to execute in robot frameworks. So first let's talk about different types of locator. Now, if you have gone through the Selenium before, so you'd be familiar with these types of locator, but still I'll tell you the names of different types of locator that you will come across when you will be using this in real time project. So the different types of locators are like ID, name, XPath, CSS, link text and partial link text. So we'll be using all of these locators in our project. So we'll come through these locators one by one and I'll tell you how to identify these locators and what exactly the locator is. So you can say locator is basically a section or you can say it's a part where we try to locate a element. Now, just if we get back to the last example that we uh, that we are doing the last time. So this was the example which we are executing. And in this example, if you will come through this closely, then you will see here I'm using somewhat like click element. So here I'm using XPath for this. Again, for input text, I'm using ID. Again, for input text, I'm using name. And again, for the click element, I'm using name. So these are the locators that we find in a website. So that means when we are executing a website, we go through that particular website and we find these types of locators. Now let's see how it is possible. So just this is our website that we are looking into. So last time we just executed, we took this example to understand the complete process. So here what I'm doing, I'm clicking on this login button. Once I click on login button, I enter the username and password and then click the login button. So here, now let me pass the website again. So here, just to locate this element, I'll go to this login section, right click here and straight away go to this option, the inspect option. So once you're into the inspect option, so here, okay, when you'll click on this, sorry, let's go back again. So yeah, right click, go to this inspect option and this is the section. Now here you have these locator, like here you have this locator ID available from by default. But if in case you don't want to go with the ID locator, so here we'll see how we'll generate the X path. So to generate X path is very simple. Just do right click, go to copy and from copy, go to copy X path. So when you do this, this will generate you a X path. So just you copy this X path and straight away paste it here. And this is how you define the value. So first you write the key, the locator name X path. You give this colon sign and after that put the value. Same it goes with the username. Same it goes with the password. Now, last time we have seen how to create these variables. So uh, already the variables are defined here and I have explained how to define these variables. So I'm using that here. Same way you can go for the next one after this login, when you click on the login button, next time you come to this username, again, do right click. Now look for this inspect option, do inspect. And here you see this ID locator as well as you have name locator. So you can go with any one of these locator, either go with ID or go with name. It's your choice. So you can go with any one of these two locators. Great. So the same way we have defined these locators. So this is how the locator work in case of robot frameworks. So for every element, it's important to find the locators, identify the locators, define it, and then executes the steps here. So this is the small story about the locators. Now we'll talk about the resource file. That's the second part of the video. That means here we'll see how to create a resource file. What's the uses of resource file and why we need this resource file. So basically you can say a resource file, it goes with a name. Like when I talk about resource that I'm, it means to the current file or to the current scenario, I'm passing certain resource. And in resource, basically what type of resource? Resource like uh, maybe the variables where you have the informations of all the sections like URL and all, maybe the keywords. So these things, I want to put it inside the resource. 
So just to do create a resource file, as usual, you'll go to that particular folder, like I've come into the e-learning test cases folder, right click here, go to new, and again, click on file. And name this file as a resource dot file. Sorry, let me rename this. It's resource dot to rename, go to refractor, go to rename, and this will be resource dot robot. Now in this, the very first thing you will add as settings. Now you'll say already you have settings. Why to add these settings here? That will be the first thing you'll be thinking about why to add settings. So basically I'm adding settings here because I want to define or if you want to add some documentation in the resource file, like here you don't want to write a big statement or you don't want to write a complete description of the test cases. So you want to add the documentations or maybe you want to add uh, the details like uh, you can say, you can add the details like uh, maybe something related to the setting sections. So you can add on here. Yeah. So here in resource.robot, uh, here you can add your own, uh, like you can add your own settings, like uh, documentation. You can add your own documentation if you want. Give double tap. Test case to execute. Execute the login form, the login process. Next thing you can define as usual, as you have defined here, the libraries, you can define the libraries here as usual. And that is also like, again, Selenium library. So this is according to our comfort. The most important section is these variables and the keywords. Now here, you see in settings, you'll say that, okay, I don't want to add this documentation here, or just you will say that uh, before executing these steps, like one step is quite common, that is open browser. So you want that, you, you want to define this line here itself in the settings, because you know every time when you will run this test case, this will be the first thing that will come to your, uh, like it doesn't come, the first thing that will come to your process is open the open the browser. So here I will use a keyword that is test setup. And the next keyword is test tear down. So this one is to close the browser. So straight away you can write here. And for uh, again, give multiple tabs, right close browser. And in test setup, here you have to open the browser. Okay. Now the steps to open the browsers are written here in the keyword. So what I'm going to do is, I know that this is a common step. So after this, I will add first variables. Now I'll use the variables, then I'll tell you about this. And after this, I will add the keywords. Now in these keywords, let's add these steps. So first step I will write here, I'm writing separately, open the URL. Fine, give this tab, go to this step here, cut the first line, see I'm cutting the first line, open browser this from here, and I will paste it here. Now, because you have paste these things here, the information of this URL and browser should also be here. So what I'm doing, I'm bringing these two informations from here, and I paste it inside the variables here. Now this thing is quite common, so we can write it here, and this is the keyword. So this keyword defined open browser. So what I'm going to do here in test setup, I'm going to put this keyword name that is open URL. It's similar what we are doing it here, it's similar. Just we are making things in more systematical manner, that's all. So now, if you see, nowhere it's defined to open the browser in this page, login.robot page. But still, when you will run this case, you'll see, that the first step that execute is open the browser. So that means every time, whatever the steps you write here in the test cases, the first thing that will execute is this test setup. So the information is one by one, you're putting it here. So this information becomes common. It's like, because now to use this informations here, you are going to use 
a resource keyword and again you will define resource dot robot that's the file name so you need to define this as well so now next time these informations will straight away we will fetch it from this resource file that's what resource files is doing is providing us the resources so all these informations that you have defined here you can put it in the resource file but usually we keep those informations that's regularly used we keep it inside the variables and keyword so i hope the resource file concept is clear and uh, what exactly like from this part it's quite clear that why i'm using the resource section so now i have built the resource section so i'll be using it to more process uh, more uses in upcoming time but still by through this part it's quite clear that resource file is needed for what and why we have this resource file now let me run this and let's see how it executes a uh, file or directory login.robot sorry i have given the wrong name it's inside i have given it's inside this e learning sorry login.robot is inside this file i have given the wrong file name so the file name is e learning test case Let's run this again once more so that you can see the output. So I click this. Now here you see the screen is shared. So it opens the website, maximizes, the username is passed, the password is passed. It's working the same way as it was before and it says one test and one passed. So it's working the same way. Just the difference here is that uh, the things are in more systematic manner. We have added a resource.robot file where we are adding the resource according to our uses. So that's all about the locators and that's how we create the resource file in robot frameworks. I hope this example is good enough to understand this. Now in next video, we'll talk about the arguments, how to pass values in arguments and more. That's all in this video. See you in next video. Bye-bye and thank you.